Good noon, everybody. Uh, I will present the work uh, titled The 6 kilovolt, 130 picosecond rise time pulse power circuit. This work is part of a collaboration uh, with the Ofet Polytechnic in Institute in, uh, in Russia and Tel Aviv University. Following an introduction to sub-nanosecond technologies, uh, we will come to our research question, and then I will present the, uh, the 6 kilovolt, 130 picosecond pulse ti uh, rise time circuit, um, show the results of this circuit, and conclude the talk. Um, the introduction to sub-nanosecond applications, uh, typically uh, that requiring high peak power and high speed bursts are um, high energy density physics experiments, as, can, uh, um, as you can probably see in the works uh, of Professor Maron at the uh, Weizmann Institute and the, and the works of uh, Professor Kreisig at, at the Technion, such as uh, um, driving fast X-ray cameras for, uh, uh, for, for uh, detection of uh, plasmas, in penetrating radars, such as uh, through wall detection and underground detection, and in biological research uh, to radiate blood cells in cancer research, but this is a different kind of plasma. There are several technologies uh, to reach sub-nanosecond pulses. Basically, in the 100 kilovolt range, uh, you can use power gaps and nonlinear transmission lines. Um, solid state can reach uh, a few kilovolts per device, but can go to hundreds of kilovolts in a stack uh, of devices. The repetition rate is, uh, in spar gaps is hundreds of hertz typically, and nonlinear transmission lines are also typically hundreds of hertz, but there is a recent work uh, in Texas Tech University reaching uh, 65 megahertz in burst mode, so I assume this is uh, pretty much uh, temperature limited. And in solid state uh, operation, we can reach um, some uh, megahertz operation in burst mode. The average power um, is probably the same for all devices, uh, for all the technologies. It's about tens of watts uh, in continuous operation. Um, the only disadvantages of uh, spar gaps is that if you run it at uh, maximum PRF, the lifetime will be only a few hours of operation. So in order to, to reach to the sub-nanosecond regime, uh, you pretty much need to compress the pulse from longer pulses down to the very short pulses. And if you start with the microsecond uh, pulses, then a Marks bank uh, is typically used, or semiconductor controlled rectifiers uh, are microsecond uh, switches. In the 10 nanosecond regime, uh, fast MOSFETs are used, uh, saturating transformers, and semiconductor opening switches. Um, in the nanosecond regime, these are most uh, most of these devices are of the same family. They're all opening switches, semiconductor uh, devices, the drift step recovery diode, the inverse recovery diode, and the semiconductor opening switch. And in the sub-nanosecond regime, uh, these are all cl closing switches, m most are cl closing cl switches, which is the fast avalanche or the silicon avalanche shaper, SAS, the fast ionization diode, FID, Spar gaps, as I mentioned before, in the nonlinear transmission lines. In this work, we use a, a multi compression circuit that uses MOSFETs, drift step recovery diodes, and the fast avalanche diode. How did drift step recovery work? Um, this is a one nanosecond opening uh, diode where Uh, basically, uh, you drive the, the diode in the forward direction. 
this direction, and this direction uses to pump uh, charges in the diode, diode junction. So we look at the pumping cycle, which is tens of nanosecond, typically, uh, time, um, and the current is I forward. Then we pulse a negative current to the diode, where uh, ideal diode will stop to conduct about here, but the drift step recovery diode continues to conduct until uh, the integral equation is fulfilled, which means that the current or the charges that were stored in that junction in the forward cycle uh, are removed uh, at this point. So this left part of the uh, triangle equals to that part. And then the diode uh, quickly stops to, to conduct and cuts the current. The time that, uh, the, the nanosecond time uh, of cutting the current is between T3 and T2. And what we know about the load is uh, the maximum voltage of the load is, uh, that can be obtained is L di to dt, which is L times typically I max divided by this uh, cutting time. And it also equals to uh, the maximum current here times the value of the load. Now, for a given charge at the DSRD junction and for a given turn-off time, uh, this maximum current can be increased uh, by increasing the rate of reverse pulsing. This is the rate of reverse pulsing, di reverse to dt. So you can imagine this peak going to a higher a negative value and then cutting down where you, where you can have the same uh, integral of the charge. So that brought us to, the, to our research question, which was, can we enhance the DSLD performance by pulsing it fa uh, faster in the reverse direction? Let's look, uh, take a look at fast opening switches. Uh, we compare here uh, a state-of-the-art MOSFET by Ixis RF company, uh, which this, this is its rating. It uh, can handle 144 amps uh, in, in a turn of time of 8 nanoseconds uh, and can handle 100, uh, 1,000 kilovolt, uh, sorry, 1 kilovolt uh, pulses. Uh, that brings that, uh, that the rate of cutting off the current is 18 amps per nanosecond and 125 volts per nanosecond. In our work, we use two types of uh, DSLDs, which are opening diodes, uh, one, for 300, uh, one for three kilovolts, 120 amps, uh, with a turn of time of two nanosecond. So it brings the I to DT to 60 amps per nanosecond and the V to DT to one and a half. Uh, kilovolts per nanosecond, and the second diode was for, uh, for 5 kilovolts, which brings us also to uh, 60 amps per nanosecond and uh, 2.5 kilovolts per nanosecond. So, um, so the performance of diodes are superior to those that can be obtained by uh, primary switches such as MOSFETs. The fast avalanche diode is a 100 picosecond typically uh, closing switch. Uh, it can handle high voltage uh, pulses from the kilovolts to uh, typically few tens of kilovolts range in a stack device. Uh, and the fast avalanche occurs by applying a few kilovolts per nanosecond ramp on the diode. So we know that these are, these are good candidates for driving uh, the silicon avalanche shaper diodes. This is the circuit that we used. Uh, it has four compression stages. The first stage is two power MOSFETs. Uh, the second, in the second stage, there are two DSRDs, where the first and second stage have two parallel identical se uh, sections. The third stage is also a second DSRD. And the last stage is, uh, is the silicon avalanche shaper diode. Uh, the way this circuit operates is as follows. First, 
the MOSFETs uh, are turned on and a charge or energy is stored in L1, then the MOSFETs, after 120 second, uh, sorry, 120 nanoseconds, the MOSFETs turn off, and this energy pulses the DSRD in the reverse direction. When the DSRD stops the current, it goes into the second DSRD to pulse it, and, the, and then the high voltage pulse from the second DSRD uh, rapidly uh, r rapidly uh, charges this peaking capacitor, which is only one peak of uh, one peak of farad, and when and then there is a high voltage ramp on the diode. It turns on, and there is a high voltage peak on the uh, on the load. The the advantage of this circuit is that the uh, the forward, uh, the forward charge of the DSRD can be controlled by this offset's voltage, V1 and V2. So it's very easy to tune this, uh, this circuit. Let's take a look at the second and third uh, compression stages. So in the second compression stage, we, we take the 50 ohm load and put it here after the second stage, and we obtain 3 kilovolts uh, in, with a full with half max of 4 nanoseconds, and the rise time was 2.1. When we put the load after the second DSRD, uh, we obtained further compression to 5 kilovolts, and uh, the full width half max narrowed to 2.3 nanoseconds. Uh, so we can conclude that enhanced performing by cascading DSRDs was obtained, and we answer the research question. Then we connected the shaping head, which is the one picofarad capacitor and the uh, silicon avalanche shaper diode, and we obtained 6.17 kilovolts, which corresponds to uh, 761 kilowatts of power, peak power, uh, with a rise time of 130 picoseconds. That brings a rise, time of the, a rise rate of the voltage of over 40 kilovolts per nanosecond, we have also operated the, the device in a burst mode with a PRF of 100 kilohertz and obtained some slight degradation, uh, some slight degradation of the output voltage down to 5.8 kilovolts and the rise time of uh, 140 picoseconds. To conclude, um, cascaded compression by DSRDs resulted in signal enhancement from 3 to 5 kilovolts, and this concept can be utilized to drive powerful and faster DSRDs made of advanced technologies, such as gallium nitride and silicon carbide. Uh, the DSRDs in the second stage pulse the DSRD the third stage in a rise rate which was over 100 amps per nanosecond uh, in 2 nanoseconds, which is an order of magnitude better than state-of-the-art MOSFET that we used. The demonstrated uh, repetition rate of 100 kilohertz in burst mode is uh, two order of magnitude better than those that were reported by other sub-nanosecond technologies, and this makes this uh, circuit attractive for plasma physics experiments and penetrating radars. Thank you very much. I mean, what happens if, uh, uh, first of all, what is the delay between the moment you trigger to the moment that you get the spark that you actually the output? Uh, the typical delay is slightly over, uh, there, there is always the 130 and 20 picosecond, uh, uh, sorry, nanosecond, uh, and, and 100 nanosecond time of the trigger, but then there are about a few tens of nanosecond of the propagation through the MOSFETs and the DSRDs. So you have a jitter in, in this oscillate? Um, we haven't measured the jitter in this work, but previous works showed a very low jitter of uh, 
less than uh, 30 picoseconds. And the last question, what happens if you have a reflected voltage on the, uh, from your transmission line or whatever you, you want to find? Um, reflected voltage will be seen at the circuit. It will degrade the circuit operation. Uh, but it all depends on the load, of course. Okay, thank you. Thank you.